Hello folks, I hope you're having a great day. I got a special video for you today. Um, when I started my channel six years ago, I did a real cheap video of just pictures of modifications and, and things I'd done to my trailer to make it a little funner and more useful. And um, I'm gonna redo that. It was one of my most, it's still one of my most popular videos. I get a couple of hundred views of it every month. So, um, and it's an awful video. <laughs> it's in it's in 420, I think, uh, K instead of 1080. And so we're gonna redo it a little bit of that and show you some of the best things I've done to my trailer and uh, some of the great mods that you can do to any trailer, any camper, any pop-up, anything that you have that isn't perfect, this is how to make it perfect. So stay tuned, roll the intro, we'll be right back. Hi folks, Rick and Akila here. We're gonna do a video that I did way back when I first started my channel. It's one of the first four or five videos I did about modifications on my A-liner. And it was just pictures and subtitles of what, what I did. So this time I'm gonna do a real video instead of just uh, photographs. But let's start at the front end. And one of the first things I ever did with my A-liner was I changed this battery. When it came with a battery, it came with a 80 amp hour uh, group 24 battery and I changed it to a group 27 which is a hundred amp hour battery and um, that that gave me more power than I had before by quite a bit and it made it a nicer thing the other thing I did is I added a second propane tank and the reason for that is it came with one propane tank and I still, I still only have one hose going to the propane tanks. And when the one runs out, that's fine. I just switch it over to the other one and I can have, uh, then I know my one propane tank is empty. I got to get it filled and I know I've got a full one that will last me whatever, however long a propane tank lasts, which usually is about two, three weeks out in the woods. This is the single, single hose for two, two propane tanks. You can see when this one is completely full, I know that, I just had it refilled. And this one is the one that's in use. It doesn't self change. I have to come out and unscrew it and change it. But uh, I know which one is full and which one's not. When I changed the battery, I also put in a solar panel, which was pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna change this solar panel up. Some new solar panels, some bigger solar panels coming and I got some lithium batteries coming. Now the problem with the lithium batteries versus the lead acid batteries is that the trailer's not set up for lithium. Uh, lead acid batteries are a very slow charge and they uh, need to be floated and, and, and trickled and all this stuff. Uh, lithium batteries, you just pound 10, 20 amp hours into them at a time and they recharge really fast, but you gotta have the right charger, you gotta have the right uh, system inside for converters and all that. So I got to do some major changes to the to trailer to do that. But with the with the solar panel I've got up here, it's really a trickle charger for the battery. And as long as I'm not using more battery than um, the, the solar panel can put in, um, I can keep up. But in reality, that's nearly impossible. This is a hundred watt solar panel, and it does five amp hours in perfect sun which is about three to four hours around here. And uh, so if I use less than uh, 20 amp hours of, so of electricity, then uh, I'm being okay, but it's not very likely that's gonna ever happen. <laughs> Between the uh, refrigerator that runs 24 hours um, and it runs just the electronics of the refrigerator, takes up a lot of uh, electricity. Um, some of the other things that are in the trailer, the lights and, and uh, things like that, um, do use electricity. So I'm using electricity a little faster than I want to, but that's one of the things about solar panels, batteries, and all that. You need to know how much electricity you're actually using. Um, 
you need to take all the things that you turn on, all the things that you use, and figure out how much electricity you use before you figure out how much it really is going to take for solar, which is only four to five hours a day of premium uh, light to keep your system all up. Another little thing I want to tell you about that I just did um, recently is uh, somebody told me that, uh, you know, if you paint your tongue white, it's a lot easier to see in your reverse camera in your car, which, boy, is that true. If you use a backup camera on your vehicle to hook up to your trailer, um, paint that little sucker white or put uh, some reflective tape on it or something so so you can see it and it makes a huge difference aligning up that ball with that hitch. One of the very first things I did when I got my trailer after I think two trips, um, I put it into a campground, backed it into the campground in the rear end, scraped in the driveway on the campground and I was afraid I was going to hurt it. And I checked my axle and uh, the tire was way up inside the wheel well and I looked at the the torsion bar on the axle and it was up pointing up and I said I want it pointing down so I changed the axle put a brand new 3500 pound axle versus the 2000 pound axle that was on it and put uh, 14 inch wheels on it from the 13s and then after I got into really going off-road and really getting over some really rocky, nasty places and I was dragging the trailer, I then took it to a trailer shop and I had them extended even farther. So now I've got 15-inch wheels on it. They're regular truck tires and it is a marvelous, marvelous trailer. I can go anywhere with this thing now and um, I might skid it on a really nasty, rotted out trail, but um, nothing like it used to be. And the nice thing about the 15 inch tires are that I can get all sorts of uh, light truck tires that I don't have to worry about blowing out or uh, wearing down uh, quite as much as those little 13s that spin like hell going down the road. Um, I'm really pleased with that. The only downside of it is when the trailer is down, I can't see over the top of it in the car. Um, I used to be able to look right over the top of it and see everything behind me through my rearview mirror on my SUV, my four, uh, my uh, Forerunner, but I can't do that anymore because it's a little too high. And I was thinking of lifting the Forerunner up <laughs> so I could do that, but that's uh, too much money and too much uh, too much involved there. And then it would be harder for me and the dog to both get in the trailer. So I did put in a new axle, and I've got a whole video on how I did that. It's really easy. If you ever want to change your axle, it's easy. Don't don't ever think you can't do it. All you got to do is put the thing up on stands, loosen four bolts, the axle drops down, use a jack to lift it down slowly, put in the new one, lift a jack to use a jack to lift it up, and boom, you got a new axle. Easy peasy. It's about $500 for the axle, and I think it was uh, $300 for the freight to get the axle. But if you're in Indiana, it's probably almost free. You can go pick it up. Now, if you got a regular modern trailer, these things are usually locks that you have to put your key in, turn the hasp, and unlock them. I changed mine to these push buttons, and I did have to do some extra work to get them, but I don't need a key to unlock them. I did have to install this striker bar so that they worked, um, but, uh, and one of the problems is if I go over a bump and something inside jumps on top of it, it, it knocks the striker bar down, and then they, the, the doors pop open. But um, I think that works great. They can be locked if I want to, but I don't worry about them being locked. Just recently I put these on and uh, the, uh, the trailer roof has springs that push it up on the inside. And I changed those a couple of years ago and I noticed that it didn't really help a whole lot. And it also caused the roof to do a little kind of a bow inside. Um, so it, it bent these up a little bit because new springs, old roof, softer from humidity and everything else. Um, I decided that this is a much better thing. If you have trouble with your roof, put these on. And you can change these in a minute. You pop a little wire off down here pull these off and you can change them to 100 pounds, to 200 pounds, to 300 pounds, 30 pounds. These are actually, I think, 40 pounds because I have uh, 
Now they're 50 pounds, and I've only got them on one side because the uh, solar panels on this side, it makes the roof a lot heavier. But this is the way to go, and I think pretty soon A-Liner is going to stop using those springs because there are trouble uh, in other areas when when you get water into your trailer or you get a lot of humidity inside and it leaks down into the corners, it rots this wood because it can't get out. And I really think that's the problem. People think it's water intrusion through the roof. I don't believe it's that. I think it's uh, humidity that drips down the, the ceiling who don't ventilate the trailer when they're sleeping in it. You need to get, vent, the, get the humidity out or it condenses on all these aluminum parts and drips down. And uh, I've talked to people who think it's raining inside because there's so much humidity inside. Again, cooking inside, <laughs> if you're boiling water, you're, you're turning that into a steam room. Something else I did is uh, with the table inside, I took away the, my table had folding legs that went up underneath and they hung down down here you couldn't use the table for anything you could possibly throw slide a box under there but that was it i had two dogs and i wanted them to uh use this kind of as their kennel area so i took the table and put this single leg on it and i put a thing on the back that allows it to slide side to side and it can it can be lifted off it's the same type of mount that comes on the outside stove but it's uh, really nice. You can move the table any way you, where you want. Like that. It can be way over there like that. Or it can be way over here like this. So it moves back and forth. And I really like that. And if I want, I take it down and put it down like the bed, like it's supposed to be. And this of course will fold up and stay up there. And uh, so I can use the under area, no leg, no nothing in it. So I really like that. That's on my, that piece, that setup, I believe is linked on my webpage. If it's not, I'll get it up there. Of course, as many people do, I changed the back couch into a bed. And right now I've got it as a twin bed. And because I have this brat that climbs into bed when I'm not looking. Kind of a full size bed versus a twin bed. If you haven't, if you haven't gotten rid of those miserable, uncomfortable cushions and put a real mattress in for your bed, you're missing out on comfortable trailer life. <laughs> this of course is one of my most popular videos is getting rid of the mouse hole where the cord used to come out this hole. Um, I replaced it with a, the receptacle where you just put your cord in and that's a whole nother video. It's an easy thing to do. I think all the trailers in the world are doing this now. Um, nobody has a cord that just pulls out, but if you've got an older trailer and you have 30 feet of great big thick cable that comes out of here, um, you need to change that. <laughs> that's just miserable. And that's nice and uh, solid. It's, it's uh, vermin proof. Nothing will get in there. This is a real simple one over there. Um, and it's not really done. But I put a piece of uh, plastic tubing on the, the uh, drain on the, on the water tank. And I just left it open. And then the, put it, a piece up in the air on a, on a 90 degree angle. And I can tell how much water is in the tank because of the line on there. And I do keep a cap on it so that when I'm not looking at it, um, nothing can crawl in it. I got to I gotta put a thing on there. I've just taped it up there for the moment. I got to fix that. But that's a really neat thing too. Um, somebody showed me that on, uh, I think, the pop-up portals. But um, if you've got a, a pop-up with a water tank and you don't know how much water is in there, that's a really neat thing to do. Just you can would you could run a glass sight glass up the side. I just use a piece of plastic because it was easy to get these connectors um, at the Home Depot, and um, that works really good too. Now I rarely use my sink for anything, and this is the gray water drain, and the cap looks like it's been replaced once. I could not find another cap like that, so I decided I was gonna. <laughs> secure that so I never could lose it. So I put a chain on it and uh, just screwed some self-tapping screws in to hold the chain. And uh, I haven't lost it yet. 
and it leaks a, just a tiny little drip if it's full of water, but really it should never be full of water. But um, people put those on top of their tires when they hook them up to a, a drain or something, and then uh, they drive away and they run them over and boom, they're gone. So that's a, that's a kind of a nice thing I did. I put this, I put this uh, voltmeter on top of my battery so I knew what the battery charge was. And today in total clouds and, and overcast, um, you can see the solar panel is keeping the battery up to charge, 14 volts from the solar panel. It's just glued to the top of the battery box and a couple of wires go into the positive and negative. And uh, that keeps me so I know what the battery is all the time. I didn't have to buy one of those $300 Victron battery monitors. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all right there. <laughs> Now there are a lot of ways to level your trailer, but these things are really cheap and you can stick these on your trailer and they last a number of years. So um, you can get these and uh, stick those on the, on the sides and the back. And I've got them all over the place. <laughs> so I know where I've got, you only need one on one side and one on the back. And the only thing you got to make sure is that they're level for when the trailer's level. Um, the other one that I see very commonly, I see these on the tongue pretty frequently and they work pretty nice too. I don't trust them quite as much because they're right in the middle of the trailer, but they work pretty good. I also installed a water tank bypass. And what this is, is I hook up a hose to this little uh, connector here and turn the valve and it sucks water instead of this, this hose here goes to my water tank. And if I turn this valve, instead of pulling water from the water tank, it pulls it from a bottle of antifreeze. This goes down to the water pump and out to the faucets. And that's all that gets hit with antifreeze. So I literally, when I do a winterizing, I only use about two cups of antifreeze, which is great. I don't have to pollute the world dumping it at the end of the season like I'm going to next week <laughs> and uh, I'm protected with my pump and everything. You don't have to really worry about your hot water tank or your cold water tank. They don't, they're not going to be hurt by freezing temperatures, but your faucets, your valves and your pumps will. So you got to get the antifreeze in those areas. And I put that in by myself. Most big rigs have that um, because obviously they've got a, 30 gallon tank, you're not going to put 30 gallons of antifreeze in it, but um, you could probably, if you're buying a new rig, you should ask for one of those and definitely the hot water bypass because the hot water bypass is essential. Now on the back of most pop-ups, you have these two panels, one on the top, one on the bottom, and those are for the refrigerator. Behind these, and they pop right off, you turn a little things with a screwdriver or your fingers if you got good fingers, and they will pop right off. And that's your refrigerator in there. Now, in the A-liner, it comes with a big fan in here that draws the air out, the hot air, because it's working off a flame or a heater down here to make the refrigerator work. The fan that was in here was noisy as all get out. <laughs> Sounded like a little engine running in there. And it wasn't very efficient. It used uh, half an amp per hour to uh, keep the refrigerator cool. In a, in, on a summer day, that's a lot of a lot of power. So I um, replaced it with two computer fans. And each one of these, each one of these uses 0.11 amps. And they spin real nice. Um, keep it nice and cool in there and you can't hear them. Um, unless everything else in the world is absolutely quiet, you can hear a little whirr. But um, I put two of them in there. I probably didn't need two of them. Um, but they were small. They're only 120 millimeters. So I put two of them in there and they work great. You just cut the wires on the old fan and, and uh, tape the new wires in on the new fan. That's all there is. So I did that and um, used, the, used the same switch inside and everything. And that's a, that's a, a near, that's an essential function if you're going to try to boondock and, and save power. I have done several videos on my outside shower. I do use my outside shower to take showers when I'm camping. Um, I'm not uh, shy. <laughs> when I'm boondocking alone in the woods and there's nobody around, I will get up at 
five or six in the morning and uh, come outside, turn on the water and take a shower uh, in all of Mother Nature's beauty and glory. It's, it's uh, one of the great things I like about camping. And I've changed this shower a couple times. I put an Oxygenetics head on it um, when it was the original shower system with the cord and everything. And just recently I put on this new, new system that is a quick and easy, it's a quick release plug in here. You plug it in and turn it. And you've got, uh, I think it's nine foot of cord and it's a regular handle like you'd use on a hose or something and new, uh, new valves and everything. And uh, this is awesome. You can set it just like you can on a hose. You can set it to lock it on so it stays on in showers. But I love this new shower. It's, uh, it's uh, again, I've got a whole nother video just for this on how to install this and, and where to get it in the link. And again, all these links are on my web page. If you go to my web page and look at uh, the shopping uh, tab up at the top of the menus, and at the top of the page, there's a menu for shopping. And under that shopping, there's different uh, tabs for uh, RV ideas, uh, camera ideas, things like that. So this is one of those many things. And I got this off a uh, pop-up portal. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as I said, this is one of my most popular videos from six years ago. And uh, we're coming up on season seven. So we'll get that video out on uh, what's, what it's been like for the last seven years. Ooh, scary. Thanks for watching, folks. Subscribe if you haven't. Down below, descriptions, links, all the things that you need to know more. Watch the trailer, watch the channel, watch the dog. <laughs> See you later. Bye-bye.